Hey, welcome back to Stock Talk with Eric Anthony. Well, the market pretty much did what I had anticipated it would do, especially as we anticipate the results of CPI data. One thing we did get though from the press secretary for this administration is to expect the headline number to be quite inflated, no pun intended, tomorrow with regard to the CPI data. Of course, we already, like most of you guys know that with everything going on overseas, we should not be surprised with hiked up numbers specifically to energy and food. Let's go ahead and jump right into some of the sectors that we like to follow. Retail today was pretty in the middle. I mean, not that much going on. Um, the biggest loser was Costco and the biggest winner was Dollar Tree. But again, when we have all those talks with regard to recession and, and inflation being super, you know, just out of this world and just all that FUD going on, it's not a big surprise that big retail kind of holds down the fort per se with, with regard to share price action. Jumping into our EV sector, now mind you, I haven't completed our lithium, lithium play sector yet, just because I want to narrow it down to about five to seven companies. And I'm still kind of doing that research to figure out who's private and who's public and who we can actually maybe follow in the market rather than, you know, just be following a company that none of us could actually hop into. So I will give me some time and I will do that probably overnight or the next couple of days I'll do that. I'm waiting for CPI to come out and then once CPI comes out, hopefully we can kind of start moving forward because we already had the Fed talk. We already know what's going on out overseas. We already know that inflation's crazy. We know that gas has been high. We know that food shortages is a real thing. We know that there's been some, I don't wouldn't call it gouge pricing, but we know that some food pricing has increased. I know like out here in California, some of our avocados right now are about like $4. Unless you get, you know, get it from the source, which even then you get 10 for 10, but you're getting like the little baby avocados instead of like the real thing. And again, if any of you guys know or have been watching this channel from the beginning, my son loves avocados. So when avocados go from a dollar each to $4 each, it changes the game. You know, his fat intake, we're gonna have to change what that source is. But anyway, that's another conversation for another day. All right, getting to some other sectors that we like to follow, our genomic sector, everything pretty much down today, as you can imagine. QSI was up about 2%, but other than that, everything else down. Mount Fang today, also all down. So again, this, will, this recap will be pretty quick, but there are two sectors I do want to stop for a little bit and check those out. Let's hop into fintech. Everything today in the fintech space, and again, I need to probably broaden this as well, but for the few that we do follow, nothing too crazy. Everything was pretty much around the zero with SoFi being down just under 2%. But one thing I want you guys to keep in mind with regard to the fintech sector that we follow is Affirm. Anyone who has been following the page, you guys know that Affirm is one of my favorite buy now pay later plays in that space. And a firm is speculated to be involved in a strategic review after attracting a potential buyer. Now, who's that buyer? That is for everyone to try to figure out, but we don't know yet. Sorry, I was getting a call. Oh my God, you know what, I know something real funny. Now this has nothing to do with anything, but I'll just tell you guys anyway. So I was recording this video yesterday and if you guys watch the video, you can see me swipe, right? Well, my birthday was over the weekend and one of my cousins didn't call me, not a big deal. But anyway, he calls me and as he called me, I was recording and I was just like in it. So I just went like that real quick. And apparently it sent him to voicemail so fast that he was under the impression that I was like genuinely hurt that he missed the day. And so he left me this voicemail basically saying, at first he was calling to say happy birthday, but then his feelings got hurt because he felt that I had sent him the voicemail because he didn't call me. And so then the voicemail basically said, well, since you want to send me a voicemail anyway, happy belated birthday, it doesn't really matter. So now I need to try to figure out and call him back. And the irony to that is as I'm recording this right now, his dad just called me and I just sent him the voicemail. So, oh God. So when, after this, I have to make a couple phone calls to make sure that they realize I'm not just sending them to voicemail. But when I'm at the gym, I do put my phone on do not disturb. So unless you call me twice, I'm not answering. Anyway, let's get back to Affirm. Around like 11, 11.30 Pacific time, if you check out the chart, you'll see that there is a crazy amount of volume going into Affirm around that time. Once the news kind of, or once the rumblings kind of came out 
that they're looking to possibly be bought out. Now, if you guys remember, another player in that space was Afterpay. And back in, I believe it was around like November, Afterpay had been bought out by Square for just under $30 billion. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind for all my firm shareholders out there. That's what Afterpay went for. I think Afterpay, in the hierarchy of buy now, pay later, I think the three big dogs are Affirm, Klarna, and Afterpay. And now that Afterpay has been swooped up, I would imagine that Affirm and Klarna would be bought next. Now, if Affirm is gonna be bought out, I don't see it going for 29 billion. I see it going for much more just due to its current customers and the relationships it has, whether it's Nike, Target, and specifically Amazon. If it were, if I were to guess, right? And again, this is purely speculative. So just you guys do your own DD like always. But a couple weeks ago, or maybe about a week and a half ago, we heard the news that Apple wants to get into the buy now, pay later space specifically for its hardware. And right now, Apple has it on lock with regard to subscription-based products, whether they're it's their Apple TV, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, their memory, right? Just, just the cloud itself for like terabytes and uh, Apple Fitness. So they already have those subscription-based products and they have the news, right? But one thing that Apple doesn't have is the buy now, pay later for their hardware. Right now, that kind of falls into the couriers or carriers that are selling their products. So let's say AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, Best Buy, Target, you can go there and maybe do the buy now, pay later and pay over, you know, let's say two years or a year, 18 to 24 months, you can buy and pay every month for your product. You can pay for your phone or your iPad or even the watch. If you go to AT&T, you can buy all those things and pay for it over time and just have it, you know, pushed to your bill. But Apple is trying to bypass that and now just do it solely in-house. And so they, once they get into that, they kind of will control, you know, all aspects I would say with regard to how they sell and how people are going to buy their products from them, whether it's subscription based for software and now subscription based for their hardware. Now, with that being said, to me, I wouldn't want to reinvent the wheel. So if Apple is going to reinvent the wheel for the buy now, pay later space for hardware, then I don't know if they would be the ones that are gonna buy out a firm. Now, if they're not trying to reinvent the wheel, then a firm might be a likely candidate. The only barrier to that is that a firm has a relationship with Amazon already. And you would have to imagine everything that goes through Amazon, they probably have everything through AWS, that data is there. And that kind of um, buyout to me seems to make more sense than Apple. But, you know, Apple does crazy things. So that's why I don't really get, I wouldn't put anything past Apple. Look, the car, everyone thought it was Honda and now it's actually Porsche, right? So who knows what Apple has in store, but either way, a firm is right now the word in the streets or in the, you know, the word out is that a firm is looking to be bought and they have a potential buyer already just looking for the strategic review. If I were to put money on it, it would be between Amazon and Apple. Let me know in the comments below who you guys think or you foresee being the company that would buy out a firm. Okay, so let's move into another sector that I like to follow are 3D plays. Nothing too crazy going on here with DM and Nano Dimension. But on Twitter the other day, I did reach out to the CEO of Desktop Metal, Rick Fulop, and I had just asked him a question that came up to me in a comment in a past video regarding the P50 printer. And I just wanted to know, you know, when are we going to get some feedback on how it's going with Black & Decker? And, you know, ever since Black and & it was announced that Black & Decker had decided to make the purchase of the P50. He said that they just spoke at the AMUG and presented slides on P50 this week. I'll try to get permission from the conference and SPD to publish the slides from the presentation. So that's cool. And that's what I love about Rick Fulop. And I appreciate that about a lot of our new CEOs that are actually, you know, maintaining those relationships with the retail investors and keeping them in the loop. Because at the end of the day, you know, money is money and you're actually putting in your hard earned money into these companies. And it's, it'd be in your best interest to kind of find out what's going on and just to see what's coming into fruition. And 
ultimately have some progress or have some have a track on the progress that's being made with past deals such as the one with the p50 between desktop metal and black and decker so i'm going to follow up with him later on tonight i'm going to see if we can get that presentation and if i do better believe i will post it in a new video another interesting thing for all my desktop metal fans out there i want you guys to read this little exchange that rick Phillip had on Twitter. Excited about something really awesome coming Wednesday. So that would be April 13th this week. Jonathan Heiliger responded, is Elon involved? And Rick Fulop said, I don't think so yet, but when they see it, they may want to be a customer. Besides that, we haven't had any, you know, any other details or any other clues on what the product may be. After kind of going through some Twitter feeds and asking a couple of folks out there, I don't think it's going to be in the health space. You know, my guess was maybe it has something to do with teeth. Um, but apparently that's not it. So on Wednesday, we should find out some exciting news from Desktop Metal about something new, and hopefully it's hardware. So when that when we get that information, again, I will post about it on the video, and hopefully that can be like a little uh, Desktop Metal-centric video going over the P50 slides from that presentation, as well as giving us some new insight on a new product or just it, on whatever's new to come on Wednesday. That sums up what I was looking at today in the market. One thing that I did want to bring to you guys' attention, a story that came out last night in Bloomberg regarding Amazon and its drone deliveries. Okay, so the story basically is Amazon's drone crash has hit Jeff Bezos' delivery dreams. Billions of dollars and a decade later, and Amazon's delivery by drone program still isn't off the ground. This article right here was quite lengthy, so I will put in the link below so you guys can read the article or even hear it because they have the, the audio for it, which is pretty cool, but it is quite lengthy. To sum up what the story is basically saying, it's basically a hit piece on Amazon on how they rather rush production instead of putting safety to the top of the list with regard to how they handle these drone deliveries. And again, um, Amazon's goal for their prime members is to be able to have the 30 minute delivery for some of their basic service goods, including medicine, snacks, and baby food. In this article, and again, I'm gonna put the link below so you guys can take the time to read it, but it does go into quite some detail regarding the FAA and what the FAA has noticed with how the overall handling of these drone deliveries have gone for Amazon. So in the article, you're gonna see that there's been a bunch of executives that have come in and gone out, and they've all tried to lead the delivery program. A lot of them have been off way more than they can chew. They're, they've been throwing out numbers of almost like, well, we're gonna do 2,500 deliveries, and you know what? We're actually gonna do 12,000 deliveries by such and such date. And up until like February of this month, of this year, they've only done 200 deliveries. So they're really just like throwing things out there. And I don't know if they're trying to bait new investors or new money, or they're just trying to maintain a presence in the commercial drone space itself, especially as some of their top competitors, including Alphabet, which I had just spoken about, they had just started their commercial drone deliveries out in Dallas with their partnership with Walgreens through their wing drone company. And Walmart has also entered the space as well at a much more successful rate than Amazon has. Amazon has been saying that almost for over 10 years that this would be a not only a possibility, but would be already in motion, that these things would already be here today. So for all my drone investors out there, just look, you know, to me, unfortunately, when you hear that drones are crashing and that the executives are, you know, kind of jumping way over into the deep end with regard to some of their expectations, all I really hear after reading that whole thing is that there's an opportunity there that I think ALPP needs to try to take advantage of because when it comes to ALPP and their elect jet, and if you watch, the, if you go into my list, you can see the elect jet and I kind of show you exactly what some of the tests that they've done to ensure safety regarding their batteries and Bayou Aerospace with their drones. To me, after reading this article, all I really hear, like, and I know this is repetitive, but the main thing I hear is that this seems to be an opportunity that ALPP should take full advantage of and try to reach out to Amazon and see how they can come in and show off some of their drones that have not only proven to be safe, but proven to be able to successfully deliver an item, show that they can deliver with distance. Because that was one of the main things that ALPP looked at 
when they first bought into Vayu way back when they were just um, showing off how they can deliver some of their medicine in a remote location. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the article. And if you go on Twitter, there's many people out there that have done excellent jobs at showing you exactly some of the key highlights of this particular article. To me, it's kind of, unfortunately, kind of a little bit of a hit piece on Amazon and just the steps they've taken with their drone deliveries and overpromising basically the general public. Another company that might you know benefit from this kind of news is a company like Drone Deck because Drone Deck already has the infrastructure set up and they already have the patent set up, which they beat Amazon by nine days, <laughs> nine days. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the article, but I did wanna to bring to you guys' attention that Amazon is severely struggling with getting their drone, their commercial drone deliveries off the ground. <laughs> with every you know shortcoming, there's an opportunity and hopefully ALPP is trying to set up a meeting to kind of show off how they can provide stability in that space, and more importantly, security and safety to these deliveries for some of these parcels that they would like to get to and from the warehouse and to someone's home. If you guys want more information on exactly what companies are involved in the, in the commercial drone delivery space, some of their benchmarks that they've hit regarding weight, um, duration, and length of flight, then I will put the link below and in that article, you'll also see exactly what executives, I'm not gonna go on here and try to just, you know, start downplaying these executives for their shortcomings. That's not my thing. But if you would like to, Bloomberg does an excellent job of letting you know who failed and how they failed with regard to um, some of the executives that were hired for the drone delivery uh, space for Amazon. All right, well, be wary for tomorrow. We're probably gonna have some crazy headline don't freak out. I know I won't be, but in the morning, if you see things drop drastically, maybe you have some money on the side and maybe this might be a good time if you've been doing your DD and you've been waiting to try to enter into a play. You know, again, not financial advice, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see a bunch of red out there. Again, not financial advice, but that's just some of the, that's what I will be doing. I'll definitely be waking up early, check out the data, after we get the report, I will report back on it tomorrow. And then hopefully we can start moving forward as an economy and trying to get a little bit better of an idea of what quarter we should look forward to in 22 with regard to hopefully putting the bears to sleep and bringing out some bulls as many of us as investors would love to see. But okay, well, like always, thank you so much for checking in with Stock Talk with Eric Anthony and I'll see you mañana.